Okay, so you want to find and replace multiple items at once in your Microsoft Excel worksheet. I'm going to look at three different solutions. The first solution will work if you want to find and replace multiple whole words. The second one will work if you want to find and replace part of a text string, and you're trying to do that for multiple cases, like the brand name for these product names. Now the third solution uses a VBA macro and that'll work if you want to replace whole text strings or part of a text string. And I think the VBA solution is really useful when there's lots and lots of things that you want to replace. Okay, let's look at the first solution. Now the first solution I want to look at is going to use VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP. I've got a list of colors and I want to change blue to purple, red to green, pink to mauve. So I'll start here, VLOOKUP. And I'm looking up this first color in this table. And I need to lock that reference. And I'm doing that with the F4 key on my keyboard. That puts dollars in those cell references. If F4 doesn't work for you, you can type the dollars in as I have them there. Comma, col index number is the column within this table that contains the values I want to return or borrow. So that's the second column. And my range lookup is false or zero. And if I press enter and then copy this down, you can see that it has changed those colors to the colors I've specified here. But where I've got colors that don't feature in this table, as in they need to stay the same, I get this NA error. Now to deal with that NA error, I can use a function called ifNA. So I'm putting VLOOKUP within the ifNA function. So ifNA has two arguments. The first is value. And that's the formula that may return an NA error. So that's our VLOOKUP formula, comma. And value if NA is what you want to return in place of the NA error. Well, that would be the original color. So I'll select B3, close the bracket, press Enter, copy that down. And you can see we get rid of the NA errors and return the original color. Now, if you have Excel 365, you can use XLOOKUP. So my lookup value would be the original color, comma. The lookup array is where I'm listing the colors that I need to change, and I can lock that. Return array is the list of colors that I'm changing my colors to, and I need to lock that. And then if not found is what you want to return in place of the NA error. So that means we don't need to use the if NA function. You can just put a comma in and then specify I want to return the original color instead of the NA error. So I copy that down and it replaces all the colors that I need to, but keeps some colors the same. Now this method using VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP will only work if you want to replace the whole text string with another text string. If you want to replace part of a text string, you need to use the second method. So here what we want to do is we want to change these brand names that I've listed here to these brand names here. So the brand names only make up part of the product name. Now to do this, we're going to use the substitute function. So the text argument requires us to specify the text that we want to substitute text characters within. So that's B3. The old text is the first of the brand names that I want to replace. And I need to lock that reference. And the new text is what I want to replace that brand name with. And I need to lock that as well. So I close the bracket, press enter. And you'll see now, if I copy this down, you can see that it replaces all the instances of basics with essentials. How do I also replace MNS with Waitrose? Well, what I do is I nest this substitute function within another. So the text argument is already in place. That's returned by this first substitute formula, comma. Old text would be our second brand name that we want to replace. You need to lock that. And new text is what we're going to replace that second brand name with. So F4, which I also need to lock, close bracket. And if I copy this down, 
you can see that it's replaced all instances of MNS with Waitrose. So then I need to do it again for the third brand name that I want to replace. So I need to nest this formula within substitute again. Text is returned by my existing formula, comma. Old text is the third brand name, which I need to lock, comma. New text is what I'm replacing that third brand name with, which I also need to lock. Close the bracket, press enter, and then copy this down. Now with our third method, we're gonna use a VBA macro to replace multiple items at once. And this will be especially useful when you have many items that you want to replace, especially if you're only replacing part of the text string. The problem, as we've seen with this substitute function, is that it can become very long and convoluted if you have many things that you want to replace. Now, you'll find a link in the description of this video to the VBA code that I'm going to demonstrate here. To use the VBA macro, you need to display the developer tab on your ribbon and it doesn't show by default. So right click on one of the other tabs, go to customize the ribbon and then tick developer down here. Then go to the developer tab and click on this visual basic button. Alternatively, you can use this shortcut key Alt F11. So if I click on the visual basic button, it will open up the visual basic editor. And what you want to do is select the VBA project that you're currently working in. And you can see that the VBA projects are named the same as the workbook. I'm in the workbook called Find and Replace Multiple Items. So this is my VBA project. I select that project, I go to Insert Module, and I get a module folder with a module enclosed. Now you should also get a code window. And in that code window, I want you to paste in the code that I have supplied. Now the VBA code is gonna ask for two ranges. The first range is the column that you're going to replace characters within. So in our example, that's the product ID column. And that range is stored within a variable that I've called list to replace within. The second range that the code is gonna ask for is the list of cells that contains the characters that we want to replace. So in other words, this old text column here, and that's stored within a variable called list of things that will change. Now, once we've got those two ranges, we can then run this loop, this for each next loop, which will basically loop through each cell in the list of things that will change. Don't forget, that's this column here. And within each loop is going to replace text within the list to replace within. So that's this product ID column. And what is it going to replace? Well, it's going to replace each of these list items with the value offset one column to the right. Okay, so let's run this code and see how it works. Now what I'll do is I'll split the screen so we can see our worksheet and the code at the same time. And I'll zoom out a little bit. I'll click into the macro and I'll press play. So the first thing it asks me for is the list that you want to replace within. So if I select D2, control shift down arrow key to select down to the last consecutive value in that column, I'll click on okay. Then I need to get back up to the top of the sheet, so control home. And it's asking me to select the list of items that I want to change, so that's this list here. Click on okay, and you can see now it's gone through this column and made those changes. So you can see, for example, where I've got four zeros at the end of this product code, that has been replaced with a three and then three zeros. Where I have AAC at the beginning of the product ID, I now have DDS and so on and so forth. It's replaced all of these items. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.